All right, everybody. Happy Monday, and welcome once again to the next installment of Map Day Monday. So, for those of you that tuned in last time, you'll know that we're kind of currently working on a continental map for a friend who has an upcoming campaign going on. Uh, last week we kind of went over basic continent outlines, we went over some of the tools I use. Um, so again, we're doing all of this in a program called Wonder Draft. You can get it on Humble Bumble. It's my favorite mapping software from the ones that I've tried. Uh, caveat, you know, I'm not one of the greatest map cartographers. There's more powerful tools out there perhaps uh, if you're really good at the ins and outs of Photoshop or campaign cartographer. But then you know, I'm not a graphics designer. This is an amazing tool, lets you do a lot of great things. So last time we did continent design, we went through and we laid out some of our mountains. And along the way, we kind of talked about some world building decisions like that. So I've got a handy Wacom tablet that I do some of the drawing on because I'm left-handed. I use my mouse right-handed. So it's kind of a mixture between right and left-handed. If you joined in last time, you'll know that uh, it's kind of down back and forth. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up the map we were working on last time for this upcoming campaign. And as we go through this, uh, take a little second to load. Uh, you remember, this is the basic outline of our map we went through. Um, I've got the cities and stuff, but we're not worried about city names right now, so I'm going to turn those labels off. What we focused on last time was we did this, the coloring here. We kind of tweaked some of these islands and the coastline and worked on that. and we uh, set up, we know this is going to be a swampy area, lots of this is grassland. This is kind of a desolate wasteland area that we're going to get to later on in the stream. Uh, but at this point in time, I'm not too worried about getting kind of the grassy land done or those things. What I want to work on today is we're going to work on rivers, uh, lakes, and forests. But for those of you that maybe tuned in last time during the stream, uh, you might notice, you know, I said I had a couple questions for my buddy. There were a couple things that I wanted to do to try to kind of tweak the stream a bit uh, in order to uh, or tweak the map just a little bit because I wanted to get uh, some questions I wanted to add maybe some more details maybe add a little bit of islands to it I wasn't really sure that I liked this mountain range here so I got some of the answers to those questions so for starters um, I wanted to put kind of like this interior island within this big sort of inland sea. So I talked to my buddy about that and he agreed that he was okay with that. So we'll go ahead and select our uh, land mass tool to do a little bit of drawing here. So you can do just, I didn't go over this last time, but you can just paint with this land mass brush. And it's just going to be like this basic um, thing. So if you're doing like a big wide area, that works great. But when you raise the landmass, it does kind of that procedurally generated kind of more the rough outline. So since I'm just doing this small kind of island here, I'm going to focus more on the raise landmass tool because I'm not working on a big swath of land. So I just want to put this little island kind of in here, sort of a little contested area here. And I'm going to kind of shape it like so I'm gonna bring it down just kind of a bit I want to give it a bit of an irregular shape and then I'm gonna put some very you know put these kind of barrier areas around here because we don't necessarily want this whole kind of inland sea area. I imagine it's not the most easy to navigate. I don't really like that one there. Let's just get rid of that. Maybe a slightly bigger brush size. I kind of want to maybe it'll make it a little difficult to kind of get through there. This is a little too round for my liking. I'm going to get rid of a couple of these. I might tweak that later. Yeah, I don't really like this part here or here. I'm just going to delete that. I don't like that. 
I kind of like these a little bit. I'm going to tweak these just a bit. That's a little close. I'm going to cut around in here for this eyelid. Give that a little rougher edge there. But just something to give it a little character in the inside of the see there. And then I also talked to him a bit. I wanted to put an island over here, kind of like in this bay area. And he was cool with that. So we're going to add a little bit of an island here. Now this one I'm going to take, I want to kind of match like it kind of cut out maybe from this bay area, like so. So I'm going to put it maybe here. And we can see, so I'm going to kind of mirror just that a little bit. You know, it's like the last kind of island area we did. Um, it already had that grass coloring because I colored everything before and I just went over with a brush and I didn't really care what was going on because I'm not worried about coloring at this point in time. Uh, you'll notice that this doesn't completely have that coloring because I did not go through and color out in this ocean area. So we'll just kind of fill that in and then I'll get that coloring done later. So here I'm switching back to that other tool because I don't care uh, so much about the uh, that center part. I really only need this if I'm working on my kind of coastlines. So give that a little bit there. And you know, islands don't like break off perfectly so we'll just do just a little bit there. And then we're just gonna paint this just so that it's painted right now. Just for style. Actually, I'm going to use, I think I used this grass last time. Let's keep the grass the same for right now. It's kind of in this general region. So that's the main thing. And you'll remember, the next thing I asked my friend was, when we look at our overlay here, I didn't like these southern mountains. Uh, so I put the southern mountains here because that's how he had them. He had a randomized map. Uh, it procedurally did everything for him, and we're trying to tweak this into more of kind of a campaign map, a, a kind of a landmass map. So what I didn't like about this island here is when you look at the overlay, what you'll see, and we'll increase the transparency on this overlay for this is the original map that we are given. So between this Hotador and this hillside from this political map that he provided, there's a border right here that divides these two lands and the mountains are over here so I asked him like hey you know it would make more sense if the border uh, was the mountain range so we talked back and forth a little bit and I got the okay to go ahead and move these mountains from kind of the center area over more to kind of where the border is because I don't want to change the size of the country necessarily but what we want to do is we want to make it more just make a little bit more sense on what we're doing here um, you have this mountain in the middle why do we have mountains in the middle there a lot of people would probably use that as a natural border between their countries so great thing is we can go in here we can select our eraser tool instead of erasing everything I just want to erase only mountains I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna erase these mountains and hills that we did. We're just going to redo them real fast before moving on. So we'll go back to mountains. For those of us that joined the stream last time, you know, I kind of went through these mountains and I was using these huge and high mountains because this is a big map. It's actually at the maximum dimensions that I can make within Wonder Draft. So some of these smaller symbols, you know, they don't scale up very well. I mean, this one's okay. This is kind of small for what we're trying to do, I feel. Um, so we're going to kind of go in some of these mountains here, zoom in a little bit, and we're going to work on getting these. So for those who are new, you can use Shift in WonderDraft to scroll through. You can also just kind of drag down a bit and Alt to mirror your symbols. So I'm going to kind of layer these mountains together. I like layering my mountains kind of more one at a time uh, but you can always just have Wonder Draft just go through and just draw it straight for you. It's not a problem. 
it's actually pretty easy to do it that way if you want to if you're just trying to crank out like a quick map I'm going to scale this down a little bit put this here there's nothing wrong with just you know have one wonder draft do the work for you because that's what it's there for is to make your life easier a lot of my time spent drawing kind of in other programs has kind of conditioned me a little bit towards doing things this way and I want to bring it up near the edge here uh, along this coastline I don't want this mountain to finish it. this is a good mountain for finishing that off so we'll kind of scroll out and we got some nice kind of mountains there that will fill in some of this space so it's not just this kind of perfect line there maybe it spreads out just a little bit to these edges there and then I'm going to turn my overlay off real quick and remember we can select our painting tool so we can paint land paint set our filter and say hey we only want to paint the mountains which I believe I actually need to redo these because I did not change my layer to my mountains layer when I did this which means they're not on the layer I want when I start putting other stuff down because I wasn't paying attention so bad on me but you saw how easy it was to make that mountain range so it's not that big a deal I'll actually have wonder draft help me out here with this first one and I'll go in and I'll use I want to use that mountain there and I'll kind of flesh it out again you know since I made that mistake I'll just let wonder draft kind of help me recover from that mistake a bit now I'll put a couple of these slightly I want to flesh it out there and then let's just zoom in find something that fits this space nice all right and there we did that again pretty quick and now it's on the right layer because layering matters when I'm putting my trees my streams my everything I want these different layers because it makes my life easier so that later in life you know my trees are going to be below my mountains so mountains will cover them up because they're on that higher layer so I'd be wondering later on why this was all messed up if I wasn't doing that right. So now we'll go back, fill paint, we'll turn off the overlay. So we're painting with some of these different kind of rocks, colors from the theme that we're using. So we'll get the basics down. I'm going to change my opacity now, kind of give it a little bit of character here. Tweak that bit because I want to kind of flush this out as we go. And I'm going to add a little bit kind of a brownish tinting in there. So now we kind of rebuilt that along there, but we're going to go in back to our symbols, our mountains. We're going to fill it up with hills. So I didn't mention last time is you can add your own personal symbols on here. We've been using all the free symbols. You can import symbols. I got a lot of these symbols on uh, cartographyassets.com, the Reddit community from Wonder Draft. So I do have some uh, some symbols here. So yes, when would I add snowy peaks? So some of the symbols I have, I actually paid for these symbols from older ones. So you'll see if you look down here, I have these paid symbols. And they look like they're the same. They're not exactly the same. Because uh, when Wonder Draft, you can import symbols and you can have them keep the colors or you can have them take the color of what you're doing. And the ones that you take the color for what you're doing, you could then go through and kind of paint. So I set up two sets of mountain symbols here. And some of them have snowy peaks. So depending upon what I was trying to do, I might add some of these kind of 
snow covered ones uh, in there but this doesn't really meet the aesthetic so I can go through here I have some snowy peaks um, in other ones if I go to my symbols palette I actually have a lot of symbols in here not all of them are put in as just mountains so some of them are symbol single symbols because they're not designed if they're in the mountains or trees directory you can paint them like I did before I just drag it right down and it's done but some of these are more uh, not quite the, that same way so if I was looking at my mountains maybe I look for now I got some snowy peaked ones in here these are the dark blue Perhaps I have a lot of uh, a lot of mountains I might actually not have my snow tipped ones installed currently so I might add that later or I might make a determination what I want instead so all of these are available of course on uh, through the reddit community cartography assets let me erase those real quick let me just make sure they're not mixed in here I think I actually don't have them so I transitioned over from my laptop to my desktop a few months ago and I've been kind of rebuilding everything and it looks like I just don't have so typically if I was designing uh, my own um, campaign world kind of from scratch I would try to think about you know tectonic plates um, maybe put some mountain things I put some islands kind of down this way a little bit to show and I'd show up a little bit here and kind of tweak in here but uh, I'm not going to go that much into depth or detail with this one. Uh, one, I, I'm trying to get it done for a buddy whose campaign starts in a couple weeks and I'm only working on it during these stream times. And then two, you know, I'm not starting completely from scratch. So some of the things aren't how I would typically look at it. So rather than try to like put all that thought into it, I'm like we're just trying to get like a simple basic campaign map going. So I'm not going to invest that kind of like super in-depth effort on it. But, you know, if I was designing like a whole world from scratch and I was starting to draw it out in Wonder Draft, I would try to take, you know, at least some look into how tectonic plates work and how they would form the mountains in this area. Um, but we're going to just say because magic for now, because that's kind of how that is. So what I will do is I'll try to blend in see I could put this a little bit behind to get a little bit of snow in there just to give it some depth using the existing kind of color options I don't want to use this one but I'll scale this down a little and then I actually wanted to put over here I had a much larger peak that I'm gonna place kind of in here because I wanted some snow there and then depending on how you put your your stuff together like I could even use these to just do whole chains but I was trying to stick mostly to some of the free assets to showcase that but I'm making a few small personal tweaks especially since you know snowy peaks was asked in order to do snowy peaks you have to use uh, custom assets essentially because these ones that come in here like I could use these these come free with the program their default I don't know I don't like them too much to be honest they're great if you're just trying to throw something together like real quick for snowy peaks and you're blending them in with this they're not bad they're free assets they come with the program it doesn't meet my aesthetic as much as some of the other ones and any of these where you're painting them yourself you can't really do snow too well on like I could try to come in here and kinda get some of these white 
and then I could go back in try to draw some more blend it uh, to get the snow and everything I'm not gonna take that much time at the end of the day I'm just really not super concerned about that depending upon the level of the map I'm working on because this is a campaign map if it was my campaign map maybe I'd spend like a whole lot of time if I'm building a map just for like hey my characters are going to an island somewhere I'm gonna try to crank that map out in like an hour or two because I know my players aren't gonna stay for a long time there uh, I know it's better just get something visual out there than spend like my whole life working on something that the players you know might spend one or two session on this is gonna be a reference map we spent a little bit more time on it kinda of get some more stuff squared away and that's okay but I'm just kinda of a bit on a crunch deadline so I don't want to spend forever trying to make it the prettiest map in the world because I can always come back and tweak things later do a revision 2 or revision 3 because it's my campaign map the campaign map is gonna be good for the entire campaign uh, so just kinda of work on getting that stuff done so we moved the mountains over we added a few snowy peaks like uh, blue man 192 wanted this border now works a little bit better we get some snowy peaks here above our desolate region so now we gotta talk uh, rivers lakes forests so rivers goes under this water tablet we've got rivers we've got lakes so if you look at here there's a whole ton of lakes on this uh, randomized map there's a whole ton of rivers uh, so typically your rivers flow from high points to low points you know it's a good rule of thumb it's not mandatory uh, even in you know our own world sometimes rivers flow weird uh, but in general a rivers gonna flow from the mountain to the coastline if you don't want to do that you can throw in you know magic we talked a little bit last session like magic you know just saying because magic I know I used it earlier it's a little boring uh, so it's always nice if you're going to deviate from typical norms come up with a reason why magic not just because magic but why magic so you can talk a little bit like oh yeah this river flows uphill and then instead of a river joining it it splits because some wizard there you know decided he wanted his house to have a river split around it so he used magic to split it or whatever I'm going to start on this side um, so there are tons of lakes on this initial map we're probably not going to do all of those lakes uh, but I kind of like this one here so you can see I get this freshwater river and lake tool so it's the same as we said before I can draw a lake I could just plop that down kind of the same size I can also use shift to scroll through different lake options I can make them a lot bigger I can make them a lot smaller I can decide how rough they are with zero roughness it's a circle with one roughness it's like well like that so maybe I want a more circular lake I can adjust my detail um, which I honestly don't remember what the detail does I don't remember I don't really mess with that I mostly mess with roughness and roughness and brush size we're gonna keep this lake here um, so I'm gonna tweak this just a bit I want kind of a different shape than just this regular circular shape now one thing you have to be cognizant of when you're doing a gigantic campaign map versus uh, another map is scale so one good thing about this is you know we looked at our scale and when we looked at our scale can I go down here we know that this is just 20 miles it's not a gigantic continent right so we can play a little bit but what we don't want to do is we're like oh yeah I like how that looks and you're like okay you know that's you know Lake Superior all of a sudden it's gigantic when you're looking at it from a continent perspective so we want to kind of balance that out if our scale was bigger um, like if I was doing a, a different type campaign because this 
campaign map. It's like a continent map, but it's more like an island. It's like England kind of size stuff, right? But if I was doing a continent like North America, Canada, you know, and I'm plopping a map down there, you know, my scale here might be 200, 250 miles. And I'm saying, you know, I'm starting to pop lakes down on there. You're talking three, 400 mile wide lakes at that point in time. So it's something we want to be cognizant. It's not as impactful this time because we've got our smaller kind of scale that we can work off of. So I've got the lake here. So that lake's going to be fed by these rivers. So the Wonder Draft will draw rivers for you just the same as it does lakes. So you can pick whether you want it to fade in from source, how rough it is, how wide it is, how much it meanders. So if I was just take a regular river, it would just do just like that. I could decide I want it to be wider. I don't want my river source in, then it would just be straight. I can increase my meander, so I want it to be really twisted. I can make it a lot rougher. So I got lots of options on how I want like a very quick and easy kind of river to come in. And the nice thing is, is I can go in here while I'm drawing, I can increase my width if I want to, and then kind of decrease it back down. So I've got options to play with the river, just scrolling with the mouse wheel as I go down. So we talked earlier that our rivers are going to kind of come in. I don't want it to meander quite this much. So rivers kind of come in from mountains. So I'm going to have this river kind of feed in from the mountain here. And I'm going to put source fade in because I want it to kind of fade in from the mountain range here. So we know it's kind of from here. So So actually I'm going to kind of start it. You're not going to see under the mountain layer as much. But we're going to just have these and they're going to feed into this lake because they'll join there. And then they'll kind of come out slightly stronger kind of flowing towards the sea. But what I don't want actually is I don't want my river source fade in here because I'm coming out of this lake now. And then I'm going to increase my meander distance there. We're going to have this kind of flow. I'm going to kind of keep with this flow towards the sea. So we've got our our first river there. I'm not going to do this source fade in here because I've already got these two kind of feeding into this river going here. I'm just going to ignore this one for now because I don't care so much about that. I'm not going to have this random lake here but what I might do is a much smaller lake. Um, I'll still keep kind of this lake here We're going to make it a little bit kind of smaller and that's going to feed in to that one. But I'm not going to do this other little side tributary because I'm just going to have it come straight from that lake here. So we've got a capital city here. Um, capital cities, they're going to want water. People like to settle where there's water so you can show that. So, you know, you start to get the impression as you look at this, okay, these rivers seem to kind of be flowing kind of towards this point in the land. So this is probably kind of a higher land kind of flowing. It actually makes me not like this curve as much now when I look at this. I think I want to curve this down this way more. So I can take my little eraser. I'm going to erase these a bit and instead I'm going to add my water here. 
and I'm gonna I'm actually gonna no, you know what? Hold on. How do I wanna do this? Because now I've decided I don't really like that too much. So we're gonna leave that there. I think I want this to kind of be a low point. I'm gonna draw this other river in first past this city. So I'll start my source fade in. This one's not gonna meander a lot at all. It's gonna be a pretty direct shot. It's gonna go right past this Hmm, yeah, maybe. And then let's not use our river source fade in. So the program I'm using is called Wonder Draft. You can get it on Humble Bumble. Uh, it's like 20 bucks. Uh, it does It's amazing. It's great. Uh, we have another uh, map series from last Monday available on our YouTube under the channel info that can go through a little bit where I got it and some of the stuff it can do. Uh, so right now, you know, kind of showcasing these kind of river effects. So I'm just going to have all of these kind of join together. And this is our low point in our land for what we're looking at. So and then I like that more. And I want to kind of seal that up a little bit. I'm not going to bother changing tools for that. Uh, yeah, that's actually one of my favorite things is how it handles rivers. Um, you can just draw mountains and stuff, but the rivers and the lakes were are really impressive. It does procedural land masses and stuff for coastlines. It's a really cool tool. I used to do mapping in Photoshop and, and stuff like that, and I don't touch any of that anymore. Okay, so I'm going to turn the overlay off real quick so we can kind of see that while we're zoomed out. It's a little thin there, but I think it works because we're doing a big kind of continental overlay, so I think that's fine. Let's see where else this map had a ton of rivers and lakes so Murrayfield is very low situated apparently so let's see here okay maybe we'll start from this lake here kind of going outwards towards the shore there so let's uh let's build our new lake. I don't like that shape. Um let's bring our roughness down just a bit. And then we'll do that. I'm gonna increase my width here coming from this lake. This one's gonna kind of meander more. It's going to head you know what? when I'm coming from the rivers I want to make sure that uh, I turn my I want my river source fade in off and do this kind of correct So one thing, like this has a bunch of like weird tributaries coming in it, but I'm not going to add those, I don't think. What I might do is some of these. Smaller kind of rivers flow in here. And then these will kind of. Join up. Let me zoom in. 
So for cities, uh, there's a bit of a possibility. So what I'll say is you could do it with the right symbols and settings. And there are people that go out um, and get like procedurally generated cities. They toss it in an overlay like we're doing here and then draw over it. So we're not really at our that stage yet, but since you asked a question. So we talked earlier about symbols for mountains and maps and stuff like that. So I also have symbols like let's say if I was in a city, I have bridges, um, farm village symbols, uh, some town symbols. And since you can put so many things in, if I want to add cliffs in the city to design it, like you can do it. I got modern buildings, town stuff. You can also get, uh, you know, I've got lots of different symbols here. And you can always get, uh, you know, your custom assets. So if you want to go out there and just have like a whole bunch of different rooftops or things like that, you know, I mostly use the civil sets for kind of like the overland mapping. I'm not really good at drawing cities. I have never drawn a city map that I am satisfied with. I always hate every city map I've ever designed in my life. They never look how I want them to look like. So I've kind of given up on drawing city maps. So if you're a player in one of my campaigns, you now understand why I've never provided you a map of a city before. And I always just verbally describe them because I hate my drawing skills when it comes to city maps like abundantly I just don't like it and you'll notice that you often get maps of dungeons and overland maps because I am better at those so so we toss a few more in here uh, there's a whole bunch of lakes in here uh, I don't know how many lakes we're really going to do, but I'll give them another lake here. Because again, since it's such a big area, you don't have to get every lake that you ever want to do like drawn in here. Uh, there's supposed to be a lake there, like a long river. Maybe what I'll do is I'll give them so we got this capital city, and what did we say earlier about capital cities? Capital cities are going to settle near water. So let's give, well, this originally had a lake down here. I'm going to just move the lake up here as a water source for them. Because why not? And then we can throw in that extra kind of river there. I'm going to make it a little rougher, but it's going to meander a little less because I'm going to control the meander on this one a little bit more as we kind of flow in to there. Alright, let's go down here zoom in. We can have a few different uh, river tributaries kind of join together here. And what I'm going to do, because I know they're going to join up and this river is going to become... Oh, I may have crashed that out a little bit. Let's pick it back up with my nice uh, much larger river because they're all kind of going to flow together here and then we'll pick our smaller one we'll kind of bring these in and I'll go so far coming up from these mountains here And let me just, I'm going to make that a little thicker, right around 
there just very carefully into that main kind of tributary there without adding a bunch of extra lakes there but we give it a bit more water then and we got a big lake here I like that it's near capital city it's got a good lake well I'm not a lake to a lake to a lake not unfathomable this area has the most lakes so I'm trying to figure out how I want to do so I still want to keep some of this I'm probably not going to put so this is actually for a homebrew world for a friend of mine that we're putting the map together they're going to be starting their uh, campaign up uh, in about two weeks and they plan to do an actual play a live stream of their in-person game here on our digital dungeons channel starting up in about two weeks so to give his players a little bit of a better overview I said I'd help out because the original map is a political map that he's got so if you missed it earlier this is our political map that we're working off of and we're working on turning it into kind of like a nice overland map and get it together just for more, some more details, it's just a fun project for me uh, to work on because I like playing around with mapping and doing that sort of stuff. So I just said I'd kind of help out with it because I like playing around and I've got Wonder Drafts, so it makes it a lot easier for me. I'm not going to put these two lakes up here on this borderland because this is the border of this desolate wasteland zone area. So I want to keep some of the water a little bit further away. So, because I know this area is supposed to be kind of a desolate wasteland and kind of just going straight into these two lakes there. But I might keep another lake over here. This is kind of like our land of lakes. I'm even going to keep that one there. And then this will feed into this one. And then put our source fade in. Kind of tweak this. And no, that will feed in there. And then slightly larger river kind of pouring out from here all the way down to this land there and then we'll kind of get these here and down to here turn off our overlay real quick that's not too bad I, I, if you were watching the session last time you see that I, you can play with kind of the water one of these settings is our freshwater color let's go ahead and save what we've been working on so if at some point in the future I decide like this was maybe too blue I can always kind of blend it in and tweak it a little bit more if I want it to be kind of like the same color of something else and you have Actually, the reason I'm here is because I did decide that was a little blue. So I want to make it not quite as that and a little bit more kind of like that. I don't remember what that does. So that way, you know, we're a little bit more in line with what we were working on before. Let's turn our overlay back on. Poor hot door. It doesn't really have much in the way of water. But they're probably a very angry nation because uh, they don't have water. But their capital city does have just a little bit here. So 
we'll do our source fade in. And instead of putting, I'm not going to put any sort of lake here because it looks like, you know, these guys aren't the best uh, situated for water based on this kind of random map. So I'm just going to give them a couple small little kind of in their rivers and we'll go through and you can't see it now but we're gonna work on forests and stuff like that and when we work on forests you know right now it kind of looks a little weird because it's all just this open you know where's this all this water coming from and all these desolate fields but you know we're still we're still getting there so we'll give them a little bit there do I want to yeah I like this one too so I'm gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna kind of bring it down that way from the mountains let's go up here we got lots of lakes I like this mountain lake here I'm gonna expand that a little bit and then turn off my river source fade in I'm going to give this more meander. And this is going to go all the way out to the sea here. It may be. We will even keep this lake, but we're going to kind of join that there. Yeah, so I had the same thing about the continent scale map maker. I was always doing my continent maps and overland maps in hand in Photoshop. It would take me way longer to do everything, get all my stuff set up, get my coloring done. Uh, I mean, this like saved the day for me. I, I love overland mapping so much more, being able to do stuff in here and not having to hand draw every little detail in Photoshop and get all that stuff together it's like it's a huge lifesaver for overland mapping like I tried out incarnate and stuff like that and incarnate works for some people but it's not the aesthetic that I like and this has the aesthetic I can still load in a lot of the assets I use for Photoshop I can load them in here as custom symbols and assets and things I want to do there it's just it works so great for me that I'll probably never go back to anything else. It's one of the reasons I plug it so much on the channel when I'm doing my map making. We don't want a perfectly round lake so let's increase our roughness here. We're gonna drop that there because I'm still gonna let this kind of go through. Turn off my meander distance a bit because I'm gonna come out to there and I'm gonna kinda have this river still kinda join in which I'll make this river slightly thicker for that I'm just gonna trace over kinda the existing with a slightly thicker river to show that those are blending together and I'm even gonna do a tiny little this tiny little kind of tributary that's feeding into that because I kind of like how that looks and then I'm gonna put another slightly larger lake up there and we might even feed that in from the mountains kind of kind of a, a lowland area. But let me, because I don't like this little area here from when I did that, so I'm going to just tweak those edges a bit. And that works for me. And I'm going to add another quick uh, tributary to this one up here and then we've got our uh, yep. 
also a comment in the chat about uh, taking so long to do stuff in other systems and not being able to use a pre-existing one. Yeah, so they added this overlay feature during the beta for Wonder Draft, and it's just amazing. You can add pretty much any image on there and trace it. Uh, just for the purpose of just the stream, I imported our Digital Dungeons logo, and I made a map based on the logo just by putting it in there and drawing over it. And you can play with, like, you can tweak all your different settings, scale it, look at what you want to look at, and just get everything kind of how you want it to be. I love it. We've got our city here. So it had this little bit of river. Every city deserves to have some water. So we're going to give it a little bit of water. And I'm going to like tweak this right around it. If I just click a lot of times, I can kind of control that meander a little bit and guide it how I want it to. Because every time you're going through with your river, like it'll just do this. If I want to change direction, I just click it. And that'll help it kind of start a new section. So if I really wanted to, I can just kind of click to make like whatever I want there. So to bring it kind of around this capital city, so it's kind of on the banks there. Just when I did that, but we're going to ignore this other river. Half this continent mass doesn't exist anymore there since we tweaked it. This kingdom uh, okay let me increase my opacity because I'm like there's gotta be some water here. It doesn't make sense to have no water there. There's not really There's a couple of lakes there. Mm. I'm just gonna leave that like that. I don't want to change too much from this existing kind of architecture here. So yeah, that's not a bad idea. Add some hills in here. Um, let me take a look. It's all forest, it looks like. This going off this original kind of forest. Maybe we'll put some, you know, we're not at forest yet. I always try to do my water before I do my forest. Uh, mostly because then when I'm drawing my trees, I don't have to worry about I'm putting a river there and nobody can see it. I have to go and delete all my trees. So I always try to, I go mountains. To dictate where the uh, water is coming from, then I do water, and then I do trees because it makes sense. You know, you're gonna have trees around water, and it's just really annoying to do your trees next. Go in and start drawing your rake, your lakes, and your rivers, and then what you notice is you've painted trees all over them, and you have to go back in and start deleting your trees because now you can't see your rivers and lakes because you hadn't drawn them yet. So that's a little tip from me. Uh, this is the reason I have this order of operations is because uh, I don't want to have to go back. I'm already going to redo a bunch of work anyways because I know how I am. So I want to eliminate that a little bit. We'll keep that lake there, but we'll probably tweak how we do these. Oh, you know, turn off my source fade in and we're going to bring that all the way out here and then I'll just start another kind of river right to there and then we're going to increase our sizing there And maybe that was a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be, but I might tweak that later. We'll see. No, I'm going to tweak it now. OK. 
kinda I still want this to be kinda rivery there. I don't like that. They didn't quite line up how I wanted to line up there. I could probably do like maybe one more kinda Oh, what did I do there? That was a happy little accident, but Bob Ross didn't have control Z, so I'm just gonna redo that. I see there was a city here, so I'm gonna turn my meander down here because I want it kind of a little straighter there. Now, this, one of my complaints about procedurally generated maps is uh, from the randomized map maker here. Is this is supposed to be a swampy land. There's no water here to make a swamp. So I'm going to add extra water in this region um, to kind of make it a little bit swampier kind of starting with kind of here so this is one of the areas you know we talked earlier about how water kind of forms together and flows together but not in low-lying kind of swampy land like deltas and stuff like that in that case because the land's so low you have a little bit more water kind of not always flowing perfectly together and they can split off more because the land's so low And I realize I'm drawing to the old map, not the new map boundaries. So I might even put like another, just small kind of body of water there. And then I'm going to just put just a few more kind of, it needs to be a little bit more watery because it's swampy. So, you know. Sorry if it's more water than my friend was expecting, but it needs water. So we at least gave it like a little bit more there because it didn't have much to work off of. Turn this source in. This area kind of needs its river. And we'll kind of let's give that a nice curb. And then we'll kind of go in here. those kind of together there are some hills here so we'll uh, I like this lake up here kind of by this area I'll even I'll keep both of those kind of do our river through the hills there and then kind of 
bring those together. Got just a little bit off on my merging there. I'll tweak that real quick. Kind of do our out to the inland sea. Kind of trace over that. I'm going to go ahead and put this adjoining one there. Let me do it. This is a more kind of watery focused area. And then let's draw a little bit of background. Zoom in down here. There's not much. Put some small little little stuff in trees. There's just a little bit of water kind of going towards this area. So let's get a couple of those in. So put this in. And I think I will even put in this tiny little bit there. Because we're going to put some hills and stuff in there. Let's go ahead and zoom out. We'll turn off our overlay. So this is kind of what our map is looking like right now. Went through today. We tweaked... Uh, our mountains, we moved this mountain over from here, and we moved it over to here. We added some snowy mountains. We went in and drew our rivers and our lakes. And we cut down a little bit from our overlay, uh, but there's nothing really wrong with that. There was a lot of stuff there. If you look at the original and kind of look at what we've got now. Now we cut a few areas out, but we kept you know, the intent intact for the most part when you compare the two. A couple less lakes overall, but kind of the shape of it is very similar. I might actually add in a couple of these tributaries real quick before we end for the night. I think it actually looks kind of okay. This seems, some of these areas are pretty dry when it comes to water, but a couple of them have quite a bit. So water kind of took a while tonight. I didn't get to any forest or hills or anything like that. But I think uh, next Monday uh, we'll go into doing the forest. And then we'll go in, once we finish that, we'll kind of add in some of the hills. And then we'll work on painting and coloring the ground some more so that we can get that tweaked and figured out and from there after that we'll see how far we get next session because I think forests and hills are going to take quite a bit of time we might do something close to an hour and a half or two hours next week to get through that set aside some extra time for it and then uh, after that we'll do cities and stuff so be sure you know if you like what you see today remember we're using wonder draft for the program so if you're interested in the overland mapping you can get it on humble bumble you can go to wonderdraft.net to go ahead and look it up and purchase that uh, almost everything we used here was free resources uh, for today so most of what we've done here you could do yourself um, and then if you like what you see be sure to give us a follow subscribe something so you can see what we're doing we do mapping every monday at seven o'clock central time so usually about an hour maybe hour and a half or more next week so if you want to tune in and we'll continue to make the uh, campaign map for uh, Shayona for one of the upcoming campaigns here on digital dungeons so be sure to tune in next monday seven o'clock and uh, see how it goes thanks for watching today